Hey, hi there. Welcome to this live stream from the XPA race. So we are standing up here above uh, Sender in Grace. We're somewhere near a site called Isab. And we've hiked and we've kind of done a couple of glides in today. We've done quite a nice, uh, nice move from the pass we were at yesterday. We've done the typical hike and glide thing. So we've been gliding across the valley, hiking up, gliding across, hiking up to set ourselves up on a high point that we can do cross-country flying. But the problem is, you can see out there, <laughs> we can't see the valley. We are sitting just above the cloud bank, and uh, this is looking, now you're looking southwest. So that's the way the wind's coming. That's the slope we want to fly off. Beautiful slope, lovely position, and no visibility. And over the back there, that's looking north. That's out to the plains and Toulouse and that sort of way. And the same cloud bank. So we're in this little, you can see we're on a little uh, peak above the clouds. And uh, that actually stops us racing. Um, I've got uh, the other teams here. I'll walk across so you can, you can see, see the guys. Um, we've got uh, Yuji over here. <laughs> he's been doing hard work on the ground, <laughs> but he's keeping up, and we're here ready for cross country flying. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we've got Inigo over here. <laughs> Inigo is doing well as well. Uh, we're just keeping a, a good steady pace today and moving around through the countryside. But we need a little bit more visibility. It's starting to break up. As soon as it does, I'm going to ditch the live stream and I'm going to get flying. Um, if you look here, there you can see a little opening in the valley. So it's starting to open up. That's what we need. We need a gap. We need to be able to see into the valley. And then we're going to fly around the corner towards turn point two, Akus, which is, it's not a, it's not a glide. We still have to thermal up from here. Um, if we just glide from here, we end up at the bottom of a coal. We've got a pass to go over, another coal pass, and then Akus. So we've got a little bit of work to do if we just glide. But what we're hoping to do is use this ridge, at least get to the end of the valley at this kind of height, and maybe get just over that coal. And then if we can get any thermals at all and any updrafts up the slopes and get to the higher peaks, we can get into turn point two in the air. Um, there's a bit of a race on at the moment to get into Spain. We've got to get to a coos from here. Then we've got to turn south. And we've got to get through a pretty scary long channel that leads to Spain. The problem is that the forecast, from what I understand from yesterday, is for very strong south wind coming tomorrow, which means that way is going to be blocked. If we try and do that jump tomorrow, we're going to be fighting what they call a fern wind. It comes over the mountains and pushes down and gives us really hot, gusty, dangerous flying conditions. So we really need to get through that channel, however we do it, even if it's on foot, we need to get through to the Spanish side. The Spanish side, you can see, is over there. We'd be aiming somewhere down that direction. Those are, that spine there is the big divide between France and Spain. So we need to get through out there. <laughs> I think feasibly the only way it's going to happen is if we can actually fly to at least a coos. And then we've got some groundwork to go from a coast. But yeah, I think things are looking a bit better. I'm not in a, a massive hurry because even though you can see it's clearing, we haven't actually got any um, convection. We haven't got any cumulus development, like clouds actually forming thermals and going up. This is just windblown cloud that's pushed against the mountains. So. You know, you, you can kind of soar this if you're just on the slope and you can kind of soar along, but you have to be very close to the terrain, which is not good if there's cloud. So I, I still want a little bit more sun to come through and a little bit more open in the valley. Um, once it starts clumping into little clouds, then you know that you can fly to one of those little cumulus and you can climb. But at the moment, we sort of 
gambling, uh, if we take off now, we're using up all of our altitude to just go glide. And then you're down in the valley and you watch the other guys, them, <laughs> thermaling over. And you're like, I should have stayed on the hill and launched a bit later. So it's, it's quite tricky. You know, we're racing, but look at the pace. There's nothing happening. <laughs> we're, just, we're just standing on a hill and, and waiting for something to happen. And uh, waiting for the optimal time, really. You know, you, don't, you want to time things perfectly so that you use the altitude wisely. And you can actually fly some distance. I mean, if we can get up, you can do 40, 50 kilometers in the air pretty easily. So that's what we're hoping for. It's a game of patience at the moment. Waiting, waiting, waiting until the right time. So you guys just uh, keep an eye on live tracking. You should be able to see uh, us sitting on top of the hill. You should be able to see us here. And uh, when we get going, you can uh, cheer us on. <laughs> um, Hey, Ripman riding you on again. Good to see you, brother. Um, good morning, Jim. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, we'll stay safe. Um, there aren't any eliminations, Peter. Um, so we can just go as far as we can. And on, on the last day, uh, Saturday, 9 o'clock. Wherever we are then, that's the result. Everybody goes for the prize giving on Sunday which is nice because it means that you know exactly when the race is going to finish and you can plan your transport back and flights and all of that sort of stuff. So we just have to get to Porto de Selva by Saturday evening, nine o'clock. That's, that's the game. Um, we will get some other, um, we will get some other, uh, uh, sorry, I had an incoming call there from my supporter. So um, I'm going to have to, in this live stream soon but he's probably just updating me about wind in the valley and uh, what's going on down there he's parked about 10 kilometers up or downstream you know sort of along the task and uh, that's our kind of strategy so he's there giving me updates of what the weather's doing ahead and i'm here so i can fly to him and fly past him and that helps me um, build up a picture of what's happening but definitely here, we still still got that cloud coming in. So um, in terms of uh, logistics and support, I've got fantastic support. Um, I've got a, a fairly big motorhome, so we've got a shower in it. We've got a uh, toilet and cooker and fridge and everything. And uh, in the morning, the guys with me, so I'm pretty sorted. I've just had a couple of sandwiches. I've got uh, spare energy bars left. Um, I, I started the day with two liters of water and uh, I've got hardly anything left. So that's one of the most difficult resources to manage. Um, when I land, I'm going to have to go and try and cross a stream and fill up with water. And I've got purification tablets to drop into the water to make it taste ghastly. Um, but to at least get rid of the uh, giardia and stuff that you get in the water with cows. So um, water, and I mean, today is a cool day. So once the heat turns on in Spain, um, you'll find that water is going to be a bit of a, a nightmare for pilots to manage, trying to keep supplied and keep fresh and not just get dehydrated. Um, but I'm fairly happy with the situation at the moment because I've, you know, I'm, I'm fully, uh, my thirst is slaked. I've, I've got enough um, liquids and I've got enough food and uh, I've got enough energy. My legs are good. Um, it's been, I've been pacing myself at a pace that I can maintain. Um, some of the guys have just been mashing it out on the road. I mean, if you look at the live tracking of the other, the other positions, that's mostly footwork. The guys have been doing immense miles on the ground and it's uh, it, yeah at some point it gets to pain <laughs> I don't know how many of them are in pain and how many are just super well trained um, and can cope with the miles but um, certainly I'm I'm at a comfortable limit I'm, I've been walking yeah my legs are good I'm keeping them in a good shape because I want to be sure that if I bomb out like now from this flight and it's like 3.30 in the afternoon and it's thermic and you can fly. I need to be able to go up fast. 
So I'm keeping that in reserve because that to me is the most important thing is to be able to like back up and fly. And if I push my legs too hard, I'm not going to have that ability anymore. So that's my game plan and just going at, at a pace that I can maintain. Um, and that's put me where I am at the moment. I'm, I'm not worried about it because the flying hasn't really started yet. You know, the cross country flying, this is why I'm waiting for this. Because I think in the air is where all the distance is made. On the ground, you just kind of move with the pack. Um, you know, if they move a little bit ahead of me on the ground, it's all right. Um, I'm going to do it as best as I can in the air and have a good time. And it's also about enjoying the event. You know, um, it doesn't have to be a suffer fest. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. So I'm um, at the moment still enjoying it thoroughly, you know, being fully fed and uh, watered and happy and well so um, at the moment the race is very enjoyable uh, in a supremely beautiful area with very few people out here um, so I'm gonna leave it there guys thanks for hanging out with me and uh, I'm gonna get on to what uh, Kerry's trying to pass through in messages and hopefully fly Watch the live tracking. Watch me go to Spain. Hi. <laughs> See you soon, guys. Cheers.